So, in my previous video, I took a cross section at the level of the closed part of the medulla oblongata. When I say closed part, it means that we have central canal. So, I took a cross section at the level of the caudal part and rostral part of the closed medulla oblongata. Now, I'm going to take a cross section at the level of the open part. So, when I say open part, it means that instead of the central canal, we have fourth ventricle. So, when you are taking a cross section, first of all, you should ask yourself at this level, which space we have. Do we have central canal or fourth ventricle? So, it's open part of the medulla oblongata. We have fourth ventricle. Where is the fourth ventricle? Fourth ventricle is located at the back. Posteriorly, we have fourth ventricle, which is filled with the uh, CSF, cerebrospinal fluid. So, if you look at here, this is the brain stem, anterior view of the brain stem. At the top, you can see the midbrain. This bulge area is the pons, and down here we have the medulla oblongata from the anterior view. Medulla oblongata from anterior view. There are two projections. It's called pyramid. So we have pyramid here. And lateral to the pyramid at the top, we have two, uh, two bumps. It's called olive. So internally, here we have two pyramids. And lateral to the pyramid, we have this bulge area. It's called olive. So what do we have within the pyramid? Within the pyramid, we have cortico spinal tract. As its name suggests, cortico, it starts from the cortex, primary motor area of the cortex, and the axon coming down through the internal capsule, passing through the midbrain, passing through the pons, passing through the medulla oblongata, and crossing most of the fibers, crossing at the caudal part of the closed part of the medulla, and going down and landing in the lateral white column. So here we have cortico, spinal tract, which is a descending tract. It's a motor tract supplying the muscles, distal end of the upper and lower limb. So the second question when you are taking a cross section, you should ask yourself about the descending tracts. Which descending tracts we have at this level? We have corticospinal tracts within the pyramid. What about the olive? Within the olive, we have a weird nucleus. It's called inferior olivary nucleus. On the opposite side, we have inferior olivary nucleus. Then, at the back, on either side of the fourth ventricle, there are two feet. It's called peduncle, cerebellar peduncle, or inferior cerebellar peduncle. If you look at closely to the posterior surface of the brain stem, here is the midbrain, this is the pons, and down here we have the medulla oblongata. So lower half of the fourth ventricle, this is the fourth ventricle. You can see this, the, the inside of the fourth ventricle, this diamond shape is the fourth ventricle. Lower half of the fourth ventricle is related to the open part of the, uh, the medulla oblongata. So this is the central canal, it expands up as the fourth ventricle. On either side of the fourth ventricle, we have three peduncles, if you look at closely. This is a superior cerebellar peduncle, inferior cerebellar peduncle, and middle cerebellar. So inferior cerebellar peduncle, it's connecting the cerebellum to the medulla oblongata. So on either side of the fourth ventricle, you can find inferior cerebellar peduncles. Inferior cerebellar peduncles. As I mentioned earlier, it's connecting the cerebellum to the brainstem. This is the cerebellum. So this would be like this. Two feet connecting the cerebellum to the medulla oblongata. So now you should ask yourself about the ascending tract. So which ascending tracts we have at this level? 
If you look at here, this is the cross section of the spinal cord as I showed you. In the spinal cord, the lateral column, here we have spinal thalamic tract. Spinal is a, an ascending, it's carrying the sensory information about the um, pain and temperature from the body, whole body except the head and face, and going up to the thalamus, so the spinal thalamic. So you can find the spinal thalamic here, the lateral part, spinal thalamic tract. What else? We have another ascending tract here. It is called spinal cerebellar tract. It's carrying the sensory information related to the unconscious proprioceptive from joints and muscles to the cerebellum. Spinal from spinal cord to the cerebellum. So when you see inferior, inferior cerebellar peduncle, it means that spinal cerebellar peduncle disappeared. You cannot find it here because it's already entered into the, if you look at my previous video, you can see that it's about in previous section, it's, it was about entering to the inferior cerebellar peduncle. When the ICP, inferior cerebellar peduncle appears, the spinal cerebellar disappears because it's already entered into the, info, inf, into the cerebellum through the ICP. What else? So we have here dorsal column tract, gracile and cuneate. So they are carrying the sensory information related to the conscious proprioceptive and uh, fine touch from the skin, muscles, joints, etc. And they are getting up. If you look at the previous sections, they are getting into the gracile and cuneate nuclei. So again, they are disappeared and you can find, instead of gracile and cuneate tract, you can find medial lemniscus. What is medial lemniscus? So I showed you in my previous video again, please watch it. We have three order neurons. First order neuron carrying the sensory information from the environment into the gracile and cuneate uh, tract and then it goes up like this it ascends and getting into the gracile and cuneate nuclei and then synapses onto the second order neuron so the second order neuron crossing or decussating and making medial lemniscus this is the medial lemniscus ml to getting into the thalamus so at this level you can find medial lemniscus so gracile and cuneate disappeared and replaced with medial lemniscus so medial lemniscus contains the second order neuron related to the conscious proprioceptive and fine touch it is going up to the thalamus so I showed you the space, the descending tract and ascending tracts at this open part of the medulla oblongata. Now I'm going to focus on the nuclei. So this is the brain stem. Down here we have the medulla oblongata. Cranial nerve 9, 10, 11, 12, four last cranial nerves are related to the medulla oblongata. On the lateral side, you can see cranial nerve 9, glossopharyngeal, 10, vagus, 11, accessory. And anteriorly, between the olive and pyramid, you can see the hypoglossal cranial nerve 12. So the nuclei related to these uh, cranial nerves are packed into the medulla oblongata. I'm going to show you on the posterior view these uh, nuclei related to the cranial nerves uh, 9 to 11, 9 to 12. So, if you look at here closely, we have just in the midline, we have hypoglossal nucleus, cranial nerve 12. A little bit lateral to this, we have DMX, dorsal motor nucleus of vagus. This chair shaped nucleus is solitary nucleus, which is sensory. And you can also see in the anterolateral part, 
we have another nucleus. It is called nucleus ambiguous for 9, 10, 11. It is positioned the anterolaterally. Whereas the hypoglossal is a motor nucleus, it is positioned posterior medially. Nucleus ambiguous, hypoglossal, they are motor nuclei. One of them is posterior medial, the other one is anterolateral. In addition to these cranial nuclei, 9 to 12, we also have cranial nerve 5 sensory nucleus, which is really, really, really long. It, you can find this on the whole length of the uh, brain stem. You can see here, this is the trigeminal nucleus, sensory nucleus of trigeminal. It's called spinal part, spinal, because it's coming from the rostral part of the spinal cord. Spinal trigeminal nucleus. So if you take a cross section through the caudal part, you should only see just the spinal trigeminal nucleus. So we have different nucleus. We have uh, motor nucleus, sensory nucleus. We also have parasympathetic nucleus. So in my previous video, I showed you we have central canal. Just next to the central canal, we had a hypoglossal. So instead of central canal, here we have fourth ventricle. So just anterior or to the fourth ventricle, we have hypoglossal, cranial nerve 12, which is a motor nucleus supplying the tongue muscles. Another motor nucleus, you can find it, it's here. It's just anterolateral. It's called nucleus ambiguous. Nucleus ambiguous. You know, we have two different types of motor nuclei. Some of them are called posteromedial or dorsomedial. Some of them are called anteromedial or ventrolateral. So hypoglossal is a dorsomedial because it's dorsal and medial. But nucleus ambiguous is a motor nucleus. It is positioned anterolateral or ventrolateral. Nucleus ambiguous is a motor nucleus. It contains motor neurons related to the cranial nerve 9, 10, 11, supplying the pharynx, larynx, and soft palate for swallowing and speaking. And we also have parasympathetic nucleus. Just next to the hypoglossal, we have DMX. DMX, dorsal motor nucleus of vagus, cranial nerve 10, parasympathetic cranial nerve 10. It's vagus nerve. It's supplying the um, smooth muscles of the lung, cardiac muscle, and smooth muscles of the gut. Now we have sensory nucleus, motor, parasympathetic, and sensory. Sensory, just next to the DMX, a little bit lateral to the DMX here, we have solitary nucleus. Solitary nucleus at this level, it is related to the taste, cranial nerve 7, 9, 10, taste, solitary nucleus. This is special sensory nucleus related to the taste. And finally, the most lateral sensory nucleus here we have is spinal trigeminal, cranial nerve 5. Spinal trigeminal is cranial nerve 5. It's carrying the sensory information related to the pain and temperature of the face and head. And we also have another nucleus I'm going to show you on the model. So you can find here, this is the diamond shaped nucleus here. It is called the vestibular nucleus. You can see the position of the vestibular nucleus just next to the inferior cerebellar peduncle on the lateral side of the fourth ventricle. So this is the fourth ventricle, this is the inferior cerebellar peduncle. So you can find the vestibular nucleus here in this area. Vestibular nucleus in this area. It is part of the cranial nerve 8, uh, which is related to the balance, connecting to the inner ear, making the balance. So I showed you the nuclei. We have motor nuclei, cranial nerve 12, hypoglossal nucleus, nucleus ambiguous. And I showed you parasympathetic nucleus is next to the hypoglossal. We have DMX, dorsal motor nucleus of vagus. And I showed you three sensory nuclei, solitary, nuclei related to the taste, uh, spinal trigeminal, about the five spinal trigeminal nucleus, 
and at the back you can see it into postural laterally we have the vestibular nucleus cranial nerve 8 which is relevant to the um, to the balance we also have here just a little bit lateral to the nucleus amicus we have autonomic nucleus related to the sympathetic um, uh, sympathetic innervation or autonomic nervous system so if you have any question please put your questions into the um, into the comment and re receive great feedback thank you